ಪ್ರೋಪೇಶ ಬೋಲೋ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಮುಕುಂದ ಮೋರಿ ರಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿ ನಸಿಂಹವಾಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಧುಸೂದನ ರಾಜೇಂದ್ರ ನಂದನ ಶಾಮ ಭೂತನ ಗಾತನ ಕೈತಾಭಾಷನ ಜಯ ದಸರಥಿ ರಾಮ ಯಶೋದ ದೂಲ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಗೋಪಾಲ ವೃಂದಾವನ ಪುರಂಧಾರ ಗೋಪಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಜನ್ನ ರಾಧಿಕ ರಾಮನ ಭುವನ ಸುಂದರ ಭೋರ ರಾವಣ ಠಾಕೋರ ಮಕನ ತಸ್ಕರ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನ ವಸ್ತ್ರಹಾರಿ ವ್ರಜೇರ ರಾಕಲ ಗೋಪ ವೃಂದ ಫಲ ಚಿತ್ತ ಹರಿ ವಂಶಿಧಾರಿ ಯೋಗೇಂದ್ರ ವಂದನ ಶ್ರೀನಂದನಂದನ ಪ್ರಜ ಜನ ಪಾಯ ಹಾರಿ ನಾವಿನ ನೀರದ ರೂಪ ಮನೋಹರ ಮೋಹನ ಬಂಸಿ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಯಶೋದ ನಂದನ ಕಂಸ ನಿಶೂರನ್ನ ನಿಕುಂಜ ರಾಸ ವಿಲಾಸಿ ಕಾದಂಬ ಕಾನನ ರಾಸ ಪಾರಾಯಣ ವೃಂದ ವಿಪಿ ನಿ ಆನಂದ ವಾರ್ಧನ ಪ್ರೇಮ ನಿಕೇತನ ಪುಲಶರ ಯೋಜ ಕಥಾ ಗೋಪಾಂಗನ ಗನ ಚಿತ್ತ ವಿನೋದನ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಗುಣ ಘನ ಧಾಮ ಯಮುನ ಜೀವನ ಕೆಲೆ ಪರಾಯನ ಮಾನಸ ಚಂದ್ರ ಚಕೋರ ಚಕೋ 
Namashudaras, go Krishna Yash, Rako Vachanamana Mohora. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Bala Bagiri Baradhari Gopi Jana Bala Bagiri Baradhari Yashoda Nandana Yashoda Nandana Prajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Prajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Ram Ram Hare 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 Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudhirayat Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki I don't know, I can't open the Veda base. So, are you able to open Veda base? Yes, I can. I don't know why it won't open on me. One eight thirty nine. Huh? Yeah, one eight thirty nine. Huh? Today should be one eight forty. One eight forty. Is it yesterday I did thirty nine? Then forty ten. Is this good enough? Can I make it bigger? Yes, I'll, I'll try. I'll try. Okay. 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 Ok
make it bigger so I can... Imejana Pada Swaritha Imejana Pada Swaritha Supakvo Sadi Viruddha Supakvo Sadi Viruddha Vanadri Nadiu Danvanto Vanadri Nadiu Danvanto Edante Tava Vikshitai Edante Tava Vikshitai Ime jana pada svavridha Ime jana pada svridha Supakvo sadi virudha Supakvo sadi virudha Vanadri nadi udhan vanto Vanadri nadi udhan vanto Yedante tava vikshitai Yedante tava vikshitai Ime jana pada svridha Ime jana pada svridha Supakvo sadi virudha Vanadri nadi udhan vanto Edante tava vikshitai Ime jana pada svaritra Ame, all these, Janapada, cities and towns, Swaradha, flourished, Supakva, nature, Oshadi, herbs, Virudha, vegetables, Vana, Forests, Adri, hills, Nadi, rivers, Udanvanta, seas, he, certainly, Edante, increasing, Tava, by you, Vikshitai, seen. Translation, all these cities and villages are flourishing in all respects because the herbs and grains are in abundance. The trees are full of fruits, the rivers are flowing, the hills are full of minerals and the oceans full of wealth. All this is due to your glancing over them. Purport by Srila Prabhupada Human prosperity flourishes by natural gifts and not by gigantic industrial enterprises. The gigantic industrial enterprises are products of a godless civilization and they cause the destruction of the noble aims of human life. The more we go on increasing such troublesome industries to squeeze out the vital energy of the human being, the more there will be unrest and dissatisfaction of the people in general. Although a few only can live lavishly by exploitation. The natural gifts such as grains and vegetables, fruits, rivers, the hills of jewels and minerals and the seas full of pearls are supplied by the order of the Supreme. And as he desires, 
material nature produces them in abundance or restricts them at times. The natural law is that the human being may take advantage of these godly gifts by nature and satisfactorily flourish on them without being captivated by the exploitive motive of lording it over material nature. The more we attempt to exploit material nature according to our whims of enjoyment, the more we shall become entrapped by the reaction of such exploitive attempts. If we have sufficient grains, fruits, vegetables and herbs, then what is the necessity of running a slaughterhouse and killing poor animals? A man need not kill an animal if he has sufficient grains and vegetables to eat. The flow of river waters fertilizes the fields and there is more than what we need. Minerals are produced in the hills and the jewels in the ocean. If the human civilization has sufficient grains, minerals, jewels, water, milk, etc., then why should it hanker after terrible industrial enterprises at the cost of the labor of some unfortunate men. But all these natural gifts are dependent on the mercy of the Lord. What we need therefore is to be obedient to the laws of the Lord and achieve the perfection of human life by devotional service. The indications by Kunti Devi are just to the point. She desires that God's mercy be, be bestowed upon them so that natural prosperity be maintained by His grace. Om Jnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksuran Militan Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitamscha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Paditanam Pavane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasati Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Queen Kunti is describing how the real opulence are the gifts of nature, the civilization which depends on nature is a much more advanced civilization than that civilization which is based on simply technology, what they call technology. 
the materialistic people are fond of technology to improve their standard of living, what they call the standard of living. And for them, the standard of living is that they should eat meat, they should drink alcohol, they should take drugs, they should in, in, in this way enjoy all kinds of materialistic pleasures. But when we depend on nature, then we can live a much more natural life rather than a life which is so artificial. We see people's, the, the, how people live today, they go off early in the morning, driving some car at a fast speed into a, some traffic jam, encounter the heavy traffic as everybody else rushes off to work, often going to factories where masses of people are employed and they have to work the whole day in some artificial environment with no natural lighting and no fresh air and a lot of noise and in this way people pass their whole lives working in these kind of factories. Of course they have a lot of uh, logistic places now, <laughs> right? Logistics everywhere, huge big warehouses and people have to move around the warehouse and find out the different goods which are kept in these warehouses and ship them off like on Amazon, they have their warehouses around India, around the world. They began with just books, but now they just, they have everything. And so many people are employed, working for them, providing the needs, providing the sense gratification for people. But Queen Kunti is pointing out that society flourishes by nature's gifts, not by artificial resources. Nature's gifts, and they are described very clearly, what are gifts of nature? Grains and vegetables and fruits, these are the real gifts of nature. And then to supplement these things, we have also the minerals which are taken from the mountains. Of course you get also things like marble and granite from the mountains, but also so many different minerals are there. And then in the ocean you get things like coral and pearls and other different stones, precious stones are found there in the ocean. And these things are there not by chance, but they're gifts from God. They're placed there by the grace of God. When people act according to God's laws, then the Lord is pleased to provide everything for their needs. So we have to understand how to live a life according to the laws of God and what, what actually are the laws of God. Of course, there will be conflicts there between different religious faiths. But according to the Vedic scriptures, the, the laws of God are cleanliness, mercy, austerity and truthfulness. The pillars of religion, dharma, based on these four principles. Of course, the standards of cleanliness, mercy, austerity and truthfulness will vary for different people, different parts of the world, different places, people have different standards. There are some parts of the world, they have no water, they bathe, some, t some places they bathe once a year, other places they bathe only twice in the lifetime. The standard of cleanliness varies. The Vedic culture teaches 
Brahmacharis must bathe at least once a day. Grihastha should bathe twice a day and the sannyasis bathe three times a day. This is the Vedic culture. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu followed that strictly. Three times a day he would go and bathe in the sea at Jagannath Puri. Must have been difficult, salt water. <laughs> After bathing in salt water you need to take bath again. <laughs> I don't know how he managed, but he did it. He, that's what that was his regular program. So we want to understand how we can apply faithfully the laws of God, working in accordance. Yagnata karmananyatra loko yam karma bandana tadatam karma kontiya mukta sangha samachara. Work done as a sacrifice for Vishnu has to be performed. Otherwise that work binds one to the material world. So that is the danger. We have to learn how to work as a sacrifice for Vishnu, working for his pleasure. Yagna vai Vishnu. Of course in the Kali Yuga the Yagna is Sankirtan. That is very important. That everyone should take part in the Sankirtan movement and our Krishna consciousness movement is trying to propagate the Sankirtan movement. We are dedicated to introducing Sankirtan to the world because Mahaprabhu has already predicted that the holy name would be heard all around the world. Priti Viti Ajiyat Nagar Odigram Sarvatra Pracharhai Be Moranam. The Mahaprabhu had predicted this 500 years ago and Bhaktivinoda Thakur also envisioned the same thing and we're seeing it come to reality by the efforts of our founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada and all of his followers that they are continuing to introduce this Sankirtan to people because by the, this yagna for the pleasure of Vishnu the Lord will become pleased and bestow on us all the gifts which are necessary for living comfortably and peacefully. We don't need things like slaughterhouses. So, of course, universities are also slaughterhouses, Prabhupada <laughs> we, Maybe we don't even need universities. <laughs> how, much, how much we need universities, that is controversial. Even today many educationalists are having serious doubts about the merits of education. People spend, of course, fortune, a fortune, they will spend a lot of money, especially in Malaysia. They're fond of spending a lot of money for education, sending their children overseas and different places and get it to get so-called education. But what do we learn? What do they actually learn? They do not learn how to actually satisfy the Supreme Lord. And they simply become blinded by material knowledge. But Srila Prabhupada is pointing out in accordance with Queen Kunti's vision that the real opulence of the planet is in nature's gifts. And if we learn how to make proper use of the gifts of nature, then we can enjoy a happy life. The gifts of nature. We don't need slaughterhouses. We don't really need all of these big automobile factories and breweries and Coca-Cola places. You know, all of these different things which, are, which occupy the planet today are not necessities. What is actually necessary is what is given by the grace of God. He's given us land to cultivate. That's very important. Proper cultivation of grains and 
and uh, vegetables and fruits. That is what we need to provide for people for their own health and for their own sanity. But people are so addicted, they're so hard-hearted that they will simply live on meat, fish and other animal things for their sustenance. They're thinking they need these things. But this is their ignorance. We want to educate people about the real value of life, how to make proper use of the resources of the world. And of course, econom economists have all shown that the best diet for the planet is vegetarian. That the more people use the land to, to, uh, to graze beef cattle and to, to graze animals for slaughter, the more they're wasting the land and the more the, they're wasting the resources of nature because, of course, they feed the animals grains. They grow grains to feed the animals and then they eat the animals. It's so barbaric. We learn that the best diet for the planet is vegetarian. We just simply need to learn how to produce proper grains and fruits and vegetables. All of these things can be, they're provided by nature. And nature also provides the real wealth in the form of gold and jewels. They are, they're all gifts of God. We, you don't need plastic jewelry. You don't need plastic bangles. You can have natural <coughs> jewelry from the, the, the gifts of God. We are spending all of our time working, producing things like oil. We have this oil-based civilization that we cannot live without oil. But actually, before, the, before people started using oil, civilization was flourishing. It was going on. People were living. Their needs were provided. Nobody was starving. You go, if you go around the planet today, you see also the animals are not starving provided the humans are not interfering with their lifestyle. The animals live on the gifts of God. The elephant has to get so much food every day and the tiny <coughs> insects like the ant, they also need food. Everything is provided by the grace of God. What do we, we are thinking, human beings are thinking they need meat, they need other animal things, but this is all their ignorance. And we have to make propaganda to attract people to these things. One of the big difficulties which I find when in preaching in countries where I visit is a lot of people don't know how to cook nice vegetarian meals. They're thinking that they need to, you know, their husband will say, I want meat. You know, sometimes you get these ladies, they want to be devotees, but they say, oh, my husband, he has to eat meat. Yeah, why does he have to eat meat? Because you don't cook nice. Because your cooking is not attractive. You don't cook tasty food. That's why he wants meat. It's your fault. You're saying, oh, my husband forces me to cook. But it's because you don't cook in a nice manner to attract him. If you would cook nourishing, tasty, satisfying meat, he wouldn't want meat. Prabhupada went to America who was, nobody was vegetarian in the 1960s. Prabhupada went there and was cooking, veg, cooking rice down chapatis. Uh, they were all meat eaters. Nobody was saying, oh Swamiji, I want meat. Everyone was fully satisfied. 
Prabhupada was cooking such nice dishes for everyone. He was cooking ro rotis and pa parathas and puris and, and kachoris and samos. Oh, the devotees were in ecstasy. Nobody was saying, where's the meat? Everyone was fully satisfied. We have to learn how to, how to please the people, give them nice nourishing prasadam. When we cook nicely, then people will be satisfied. Nobody will complain. Last night, nobody complained. Where's the meat? They were all happy eating. They were very, I saw they were all very satisfied eating prasadam. They were enjoying. And so this is our business as devotees. We want to introduce this program, chanting Hare Krishna, and eating prasadam. These are the two most powerful ways of preaching to people. You want to convince people about Krishna consciousness, these two things are the means by which we can convince the whole world. By nice kirtan and nice prasadam, everyone will be satisfied. No one will complain. Nice kirtan, very important. To, uh, to arrest their disturbed minds. You know, people like music. Balade Prabhu is from the Philippines, right? In the Philippines, these Filipinos, they can go without food, they cannot go without music. <laughs> they love music. You get in one of those jeepneys and they blast you with the music. <laughs> They have these jeepneys taking people everywhere, you know, and they, as soon as you get inside, you know, this heavy music. They love music. You know, everywhere Filipinos love music. They love to sing and dance. They love prasadam. This is everywhere in the world, not just Philippines. People are very fond of kirtan. We're seeing kirtan attracts a lot of people. The kirtan mellows. Radhadesh, they have kirtan mellows there every year. So many people come and they enjoy kirtan for several days. And we want to introduce more. We're doing also in Malaysia, we have also kirtan. It brings a lot of people. People love kirtan. You have, give class, and you don't get too many people. <laughs> but you have kirtan. Wow, everybody comes. Wow, I never saw them before. So many people, they love kirtan. And prasada, we saw last night, we had Rathiatra. We didn't have too many people on the parade, but I got in the hall and wow, the hall is full. Where did all the people come from? I was surprised. Then I thought, oh, prasadam, yeah. <laughs> Comfort prasadam. Prasadam is what brings people, the Sunday program, the Sunday program, the people come for Prasadam. <laughs> right? If there's a night, especially when they know there's a feast, then the crowd will be even more. Sunday lecture, very, not so many people. But Prasadam, wow, <laughs> so many people, they all come. So prasadam is very important. Of course, it's our secret weapon in preaching to people. And this is how we convince people about Krishna consciousness. And sometimes Prabhupada would sit on his Vyasasan and he'd point to different people and say, you became a devotee because of prasadam. And the devotee would go, yes, Prabhupada. And you also became a devotee. Yes, bro. And Prabhupada went through it and everybody all just went, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were all admitting. That they become devotees just simply because of prasadam. It was prasadam which really conquered them. So of course we, we need prasadam, but we need also to support that prasadam with nice philosophy, just to make it real, to convince people. People, people want to know. Why, why you eat like that? Why you don't eat meat? When we can explain to them, we can explain the economic principles, the, the uh, medical, according to the anatomy of our body, our body's designed in a way it's meant to be vegetarian, 
And when you look at the land, proper use of the land, that economically, that the vegetarian diet will feed many more people than if you have a meat-based diet. And then also, most the, the laws of God, that it's the laws of God that every living entity has a right to live. We don't have a right to go and kill animals just for the satisfaction of our tongue. It is the most barbaric thing to do. And so people are so addicted, Prabhupada points out, he said, they like the taste of blood. And they like the taste, he said, they want to taste the blood, he said, let them drink milk. Milk is the natural way to taste the blood of the cow. They don't need to kill the cow, they don't need to eat meat, they can drink milk. That is healthy for them. By drinking milk you get pious activities. The vegans say, no, but actually drinking milk is actually pious, for, helps them to develop a, a good brain to understand Krishna Consciousness. So we're trying to educate people in these principles. We want people to understand that nature's resources are the real gifts of God. We make proper use of them and the world can be a very much better place. But if we abuse everything, we simply think of it for our own sense gratification, then it creates problems. The more we go against the laws of God, the more we create havoc on the planet. And the laws of God is, we should practice non-violence, we should be, we should protect all, be, be kind to all living entities. We're, we're taught to be compassionate to other living entities. So we're trying to apply these principles in our Krishna conscious lifestyle. Are there any questions? Anyone? Any comments? Let's see. Yes, Prabhu? We are talking so much about slaughtering cows around the world, slaughtering animals, and uh, taking meat as a thing. Can I take it that that animal is a friend to slaughter cows? Past karma is playing the death. Animals, the animal body itself is the karma. They're placed in the animal body, it's a, the result of their past. But it, it's, it's not karma for someone else to take the cow or take the... Is there a battery in it, Hare Krishna? Kathy, you're saying is it karma that somebody is slaughtering them? No, it's not karma, it's vi karma. It acts against the scriptures. Karma is to act according to the scriptures, to act piously, to act according to the scriptures. And by doing karma, you can elevate yourself, you can get. 
material happiness and material prosperity by performing karmic activities according to the scriptures. But when we act against the scriptures, when you perform acts against the scriptures, that is vikarma, that is sinful, and that will take you to hell. Now, is the animal suffering because of its karma? When somebody slaughters a cow, is it the karma? Mm. It, 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 it's not the karma of the cow. They don't suffer karma. They're, that body itself is the karma. But the, when the cow is killed, then it, the, the animal has to take birth again because it, it did not complete its time in the, in the animal body. So they have to come again. When you kill the animals, then they have to take birth again. They're denied that opportunity to progress naturally. If they can live out their life naturally, then the soul from the cow will take the higher form of life, will come to the human species. But when they're killed, then when they're slaughtered, they have to come back again, take birth again, spend more time. And they have. So that's why Srila Prabhupada said, people, if people want to eat cows so badly, he said, let them wait till the cow dies. When the cow dies naturally, then we don't object so much to them eating the cow. If they want to eat the cow, the cows die dead naturally. They can take the dead body of the cow. They can take it. They can cut it up and eat it. If they, that's what they want. But we object to killing the animal while it's still alive. That slaughtering. That is very barbaric. Very. That is against the scriptures. But if they wait for the animal to die, we don't, all right, you can take the, the dead body, you can take it. I don't think they get so much, they won't get so much karma for that. But the people who are killing the cows, then they say, Vyadi ma jiva ma mara, that the butcher don't live and don't die because they're living in hell and when they die, they will go to hell. That is the position of the, the hunter or the butcher. That they're living in hell and when they die, they will go to hell. And people who are purchasing meat and who are cooking meat and who are transporting meat and so on, they're all involved. They're all taking karma. They're all in, involved in the sinful activity and they all have to take reactions for these things. So we had one devotee, he was working in the Middle East there, he was in the supermarket but they, they, put, it, they put him on the meat counter. So he, he was actually ch he's chanting 16 rounds, but he was on the meat counter. And so he was asking what to do. So we told him, you have to find another job, you know, you can't do that. You cannot be in the meat, cutting the meat and packing the meat and putting it on display. That is not suitable for devotees. At one point, Prabhupada told the devotees to get jobs. This was early in the movement. And the devotees, when they got jobs in the cigarette factory, and Prabhupada told them immediately, he said, Oh, no, no. He said, You cannot work in the cigarette factory. So we have some conditions, you know, some things which some certain conditions we don't want to get involved in. We don't want anything to do with mar merchant, uh, marketing meat and animal products. And we don't also 
works with things like cigarettes and alcohol. This is not the business of devotees. We don't indulge in these things ourselves and it would be hypocritical for us to be working in an industry which is promoting these things. Oh, some people say, oh, I cannot find another job. Oh, how will I make a living? <laughs> well, you, you, it will, you have to be patient. Certainly you can find other jobs. There are, uh, there are so many other jobs you can find without doing things like that. So we try to educate people, try to guide people away from these kind of habits. And we try to create also, try to create suitable employment for people so that they don't have to do these things like devotees are doing things like making prasadam and selling prasadam, having sometimes catering business and restaurant business. We want to uh, try to uh, arrange more in the future, try to employ devotees so that devotees can work with work in the devotee community. Yes? Um, But still, it's, it's not something we would offer to Krishna. That is not what we want to offer to Krishna. And sometimes people who are addicted to meat eating, they have things like vegetarian chicken and vegetarian fish, which is some soya products which they use and they treat it certain ways so they taste like fish or taste like chicken. But that is not really, that we don't offer these kind of things to Krishna. This is not food in the mode of goodness. This kind of food, this is for people who are very addicted to, to meat eating. They're not able to give up. They have not tasted Kurma <laughs> and Colombo, right? They haven't tasted the wonderful curries, the famous curries which they make here in Kuchin. Kuchin is famous for their Kurma and Colombo. The, Ch the Chinese people came last time I was here, we had these Chinese people come and they said, where is that curry? <laughs> They just loved it, you know, they really like it. So, we want more people to route to get the opportunity to taste the nice prasada, the food offered to Krishna. And it should be food offering to Krishna, it should be in the mode of goodness. It should be things which are fresh, not some chemically produced thing. So, some manufacture, some chemical process to produce meat, taking a cell from the animals. And yeah. People are so crazy. They'll do anything to satisfy the tongue. 
So we want to teach them to use the tongue to chant Hare Krishna and taste prasada. That is the best use of the tongue. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki. Dr. Vrinda ki.